Regional Ballroom of the Beverly Hilton Hotel. Welcome to the 68th Annual Golden Globe Awards. And now, your host for the evening, ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Gervais. Thank you. Hello. And hello. Welcome to the 68th Annual Golden Globe Awards, live from the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Los Angeles. It's going to be a night of partying and heavy drinking. Or as Charlie Sheen calls it, breakfast. Wow. Whoa. So, let's get this straight. What he did was, he, uh, he picked up a porn star, um, paid her to have dinner with him, Introduced her to his ex-wife, as you do. Uh, uh, went to a hotel, uh, got, got drunk, got naked, trashed the place while she was locked in a cupboard. And uh, that was a Monday. What, what did he do New Year's Eve? Anyway, welcome. The Golden Globes is a celebration of the best in TV and movies over the last year, voted for by the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. It was a big year for 3D movies, Toy Story, Despicable Me, Tron. Seems like everything this year was three-dimensional. Except the characters in The Tourist. Um, I, I feel bad about that joke. I, no, no, I'll tell you why. I'm jumping on the bandwagon, because I haven't even seen The Tourist. Who has? Um, but, no, it must be good, because it's nominated. So shut up, OK? <laughs> And I'd like to quash this ridiculous rumour going round that the only reason The Tourist was nominated was so the Hollywood Foreign Press could hang out with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. That is, that is rubbish. That is not the only reason. They also accepted bribes. Let's... No. All that happened was some of them were taken to see Cher in concert. How the hell is that a bribe? Really? Do you want to go and see Cher? No. Why not? Because it's not 1975. <laughs> there were a lot of big films that didn't get nominated this year. Nothing for Sex in the City 2. Um, no, I was sure the Golden Globe for special effects would go to the team that airbrushed that poster. Um, <laughs> well, great job. Girls, we know how old you are. I saw one of you in an episode of Bonanza. <laughs> also not nominated, I love you, Philip Morris, um, Jim, Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, two heterosexual actors pretending to be gay. So the complete opposite of some famous Scientologist then. Um, <laughs> what? what? Probably. My lawyers helped me with the wording of that joke. <laughs> They're not here. OK. <laughs> There's been some great new TV drama this year, like Boardwalk Empire and The Walking Dead. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Talking of The Walking Dead, congratulations to Hugh Hefner, who, uh, who's getting married at the age of 84 to 24-year-old beauty, Crystal Harris. Um, when she was asked why she was marrying him, she said, because he lied about his age. <laughs> he told me he was 94. Oh, come on. Um, don't worry. Hold out and just, just don't look at it when you touch it. That's done. <laughs> I warned them. Um, one of the biggest events in TV this year was the finale of Lost, one of my favourites, and uh, all the questions were answered, yeah. Um, I have to say, though, it was quite a complicated finale. I'm not sure I totally understood it all, but from what I can make out, I'm pretty sure the fat one ate them all. Uh, I, I think... Should we get on with it? 
Our first presenter is beautiful, talented, and Jewish, apparently. Mel Gibson told me that. He's obsessed. Um, please welcome Scarlett Johansson. You know our next presenter from such films as Hudson Hawk, Look Who's Talking, Mercury Rising, Colour of Night, Fifth Element, yeah. Hearts War. Please welcome Ashton Kutcher's dad, Bruce Willis. <laughs> Sometimes Hollywood does, uh, Hollywood does provide you with outrageous fortune. Thank you. Next up, Eva Longoria has the daunting task of introducing the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press. That's nothing. I just had to help him off the toilet and pop his teeth in. Um, it was messy. Please welcome Eva Longoria. Do this in oh, it's also the worst room for a comic because um, Jerry Seinfeld said he'd never do an award show because they're not there to be made laugh, they're there to see if they've won an award. Yes. And of course, as it goes on, with everyone that wins, three people lost. <laughs> so it's exponential, the people that go, I don't care anymore. So you end up with basically two thirds of the room are extremely unhappy. And drunk. And you've got to try and, and make them laugh. Yeah. And well, your strategy is to, is to try and pour on the misery. No, so my strategy is to make me laugh. <laughs> If there's anyone in the world like me, that's a bonus. I'm very Darwinist about this. You do your own thing, and then you see if you survive. And I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Because if you start second-guessing, and you're trying to find people that are like you, or change it to make certain people like you, you're finished. And you're finished as a comedian more than any other thing in the world. You know, it's not my job to worry about what people think of me. That's a job for a politician. Okay? I don't care what people think of me. I care that I've done a good job and I care that I told the truth. That's all I care about. If it's funny, what a great bonus that is. When we come back, I'm going to ask you about what I think was the most contentious part of your speech at the Globes. Okay. Sure, in his mind, it was all in good fun. Um, and it was, but there were some awkward, you know, in, in the room, being in the room, it was like, yeah. Eat. I want to say last night I watched the Golden Globes, I was offended by Ricky Gervais. <laughs> I was offended that a comedian could be that funny at an award show. Ricky was hilarious. I thought he's brilliant. He was naughty, wasn't he? 